What's going on guys? It's your boy Cyanide Prince here back with another Dark Nemesis video and today we're going to be giving out some tips that every beginner should know in Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest. So let's get into it guys. Alright guys, so the first tip I want to give you guys is stamina. I know that sounds a little weird, but stamina is so important in this game you're gonna need it for world bosses you're gonna need it for campaign and i'm pretty sure you're gonna need it for pvp so why is stamina so important well your pool is only out of a hundred so if you see on screen it's only out of a hundred and in the number in front is how much you have left so what i suggest is making sure you're paying attention to your stamina and making sure that you use diamonds to purchase stamina anytime you can and why i say that is because you run out fairly quickly especially when you're refining equipment you tend to use stamina to buy the books to refine your equipment so my first tip is to making sure that you are limiting you what you spend stamina on and you're making sure you buy stamina whenever you can because it is so useful in the game. All right, and my second tip to give you guys is the modes. So as you can see on screen, you're going to see campaign, you're going to see bounty and different modes that you have in game. A lot of it is solo combat, which is like the campaign. You do that by yourself. But the other ones, there's a lot of ones that you can use that you can play with friends. And why I say this is so important is that it gives them and you extra rewards when you play with other friends instead of playing, let's say, quick match. So why I say this is important is because if somebody sends you an invite, it gives you almost up to three times the rewards than let's say you doing it by yourself in quick match or yeah, just you doing it in quick match with random players instead of you doing it with friends. Every reward counts. It helps with your BP in the game, which BP, as we all know, is very important in this game. So making sure that when you do these modes, you send out requests to friends so that they can get extra rewards, but making sure that you accept those invites when they send you invites because you get extra rewards as well. All right, and the third tip I want to give to you guys is upgrading skills, equipment, companions, the mounts, everything in the game that has to deal with BP, you want to make sure that you are upgrading it, whether you have it equipped or not. So as you can see on the screens of uh, the equipment, you want to make sure that you are upgrading them. Uh, they all go up to the level that you are currently. So let's say I'm a level 45. All my equipment should be up to level 45. It helps with your stats. It helps with your battle, your BP, which is just your battle power. And it just helps with your overall statistic in the game. The same goes with companion. If you have a companion um, equipped, cool. Make sure that it is upgraded and you're using the resources needed to upgrade them. But make sure you are upgrading the ones that you aren't using. You want to make sure you're upgrading those because they all go towards your battle power. And there's certain things in the game that you can't do unless you are upgrading them. Same thing goes for the mounts. Or the, well, in this game, they're called spirits. You want to make sure that you're upgrading them, especially with those because they go, go to battle with you. And you want to make sure that those skills on those mounts are upgraded because of the fact that you don't want weak skills when you're trying to attack somebody with amount and it's barely doing any damage so and it also goes towards your bp so it's kind of just overall a double whammy i want to say and it's just it's just overall very good and it goes towards your bp and then you have valuable skills to use when you're in combat so make sure that you're upgrading your skills your combat um when it comes down to skills they all go up to your level as well so if i'm a level 45 they're all going to go up to level 45 and making sure that you have them all up to your current level all right, and the next tip I want to give to you guys, which would be tip number four, is shadow market. So, as you're going to see at the top the top of your screen, when you go to the little main city, which is called the Mirror City, um, you're going to see a shadow market icon. You want to press that, and it's going to give you a variety of items that you can purchase with either gold or diamonds. So, what I really recommend you mostly buy these things, unless it's a resource that you really need, such as... um let's say stones or companion stones or spirit stones or whatever you need for something specific that you're upgrading, 
be my guest, buy those. But making sure that you're buying shards. So shards, if it goes towards wings, um, if it's going towards um, a specific companion, a specific spirit mount, you want to make sure you're buying those because you don't really get those shards anywhere else in a large amount besides the shadow market you can get them let's say in world bosses what else you can get them in bounty um sometimes you can get them even in campaign but making sure you buy them in the stock you know the shadow market is very important so that's what i recommend you use a lot of your diamonds because in the beginning you're going to get a lot of diamonds and i would recommend buying a lot of those shards to making sure that you get other wings and other companions and you making sure that you upgrade those as well to go towards your bp in the game all right guys and my fifth and final tip for you guys for all the beginners out there is chess and vase in campaign so when you're playing campaign whether you've noticed it or not you're going to see these little glowing icons i'm going to put it on screen for you guys but you're going to see a little glowing icon on specific chests and vases so but when it comes down to the vases, all you need to do is destroy them. So by hitting them, smacking them, even in battle, you might even do it on accident. You're going to destroy them. It's going to give you extra gold and extra is always good. So if you're playing campaign, just making sure that you're searching around looking for those little vases to destroy because it will give you some extra gold. As far as the chess, you will see chess on the map. It's gonna the map is gonna be in the top right, and you'll find little rooms. It's gonna be a, a gold icon on the screen. It's gonna be a chess gold icon. You want to make sure that you're going into those rooms to go up to them and press to open them. It's gonna give you golden keys. It's gonna give you other chests. It's gonna give you a lot of goodies that you're gonna need moving forward in the game. All right, guys, and those are going to be my top five tips for beginners in Dark Nemesis Infinite Quest. If you like the video, just make sure to subscribe, like it, maybe even leave a comment. But this is just for beginners. I'm going to be making more videos in regards to intermediate and even more advanced players, such as for the wild, world bosses, things such as that. But if you're just starting out today, these are some good tips that you will need moving forward in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed. See ya.